impending change in U.S. border policy could put increased pressure on Mexico's migrant detention system and lead to more reports of human rights violations. Migrant advocates have warned in the past and in the wake of a deadly fire that killed 40 innocent people just last month on March 27 in a migrant detention center in the northern border city of Suadet Juarez as a warning sign. <laughs> And now, on May 11, the U.S. is slated to lift a COVID health order known as Title 42 that has allowed it to rapidly return migrants from the southern border back to Mexico. That is expected to lead to a large increase in the number of migrants attempting to cross the border and the U.S. will likely then lean on Mexico for tighter migration controls such as detention and deportations. Talking about Texas, communities, on the other hand, are protesting and demanding elected leaders to take some kind of action to save our nation because they claim that southern border is under invasion of Mexican cartels, which needs to be uh, declared as terror organizations and authorities need to seize bank accounts and their assets of these cartels and also established in a Texas border defense unit. Now all this we are going to talk about another situation and which has been developed in recent months by the Republican governors of Florida and Texas which has sent thousands of migrants seeking sanctuary in, in the, uh, seeking migration in sanctuary in cities run by Democratic politicians which includes New York, Chicago and Washington DC. The other day New York Mayor Eric Adams accused the White House of turning its back on New York City as Americans most populous city has taken in busloads of migrants sent from the Mexican border in Texas and they were transferred to New York. This is one of the largest humanitarian crises that this city has ever experienced. It will impact every service in the city. Why is it every elected official in Washington, D.C. asking the national government, why are you doing this to New York? The national government has turned its back on New York City. And we have to ask that question. We should be standing on the steps of the White House and asking the national government, what are you doing to the city of New York? This is impacting our schools, public safety, our ability to take care of those who were already in shelters. This is impacting the entire city. New York has received over 52,000 migrants since last year and over 200 asylum seekers. They arrived in New York City each day, which has exacerbated a housing crisis in New York, which they're already dealing with the worsening homelessness crisis over there. All this will be discussed in my show today with an immigration attorney, author and speaker, Ruby Powers. Thank you, Ruby Powers, for joining me today in my show. Uh, tell us, what is Article uh, Title 42? So Title 42 is this provision that is used for health 
uh, to, to preserve the health of the United States. And basically, uh, we really didn't even know what that was mm -hmm. until the exactly. pandemic happened. Yeah. And then um, they, the Trump administration used it to expel people it from was, coming in. It was yeah. there in 2019, and, and COVID never happened as right. yet. So right. how come they knew that they had to put that well, in? Well, I think somebody did some research and figured out it was a way to just keep people they didn't want to come into the country in, from coming in. And it was used on the, on the basis of health. Okay. Uh, pandemic, you know, before the, the vaccine came about. And I mean, that makes sense. But then once the vaccine and like the numbers started going down, and this is the kicker, when COVID is not no longer considered an emergency, yeah. a health emergency, which I believe is May 11th. Yes, um, May 11th, they are lifting you know, it. Yeah. So then that's when things are going to change and they can't use Title 42 anymore. So it was, it's a health provision that you, immigration was being used for immigration expel, expulsions at the border. So people couldn't come in because they're saying, hey, we've got this pandemic thing coming yeah. on. We can't and let you they in. They were supposed to right. stay in the, in, the, in the detention centers in Mexico well, or wherever. Yeah, just you can't come in. And the, the thing is, it got a little messy because then they were letting some people in and not oh. some other people. And I mean, I've, I have clients that have come in and I've listened to lots of continued legal education about the border. Yeah. And basically the consistency is there's no consistency as to who's gotten in and who was considered an exempt. So is it, okay, my next question, Ruby, is like, is it because you're dealing with all those clients and those, yeah. all those people who are filing for their papers so how is it that bad like they're saying there is an invasion happening at our southern borders and all you know that? i don't like using certain words like invasion and yeah, crisis and things like that i think it's sort of like a depending on uh you know it, words aren't powerful i think the thing is is that there's always been demand um, and there weren't a lot of free movement of people during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then once those travel bans got lifted, yes, I guess you could everybody say, started, then there was a lot yeah. of more movement. People yeah. reevaluated life, things are different. There's a lot of movement going on in people in countries and politics. So I think it's just, uh, just general, you know, pent up demand, if you will. And then now there people are just moving around a little bit so more. So it's, it's more like a politicized worship. Yeah, I mean, you can use those words and make it seem like a big, a big deal but yeah. like there are a lot of people coming but the thing is is like you there's ways to to work and process that and and to use the law that we have and i i think we shouldn't be afraid of it so the, the, here's my question like uh people were migrating uh crossing the border mm -hmm. in obama administration and biden administration and trump administration so do you see any uptake special specific uptake or something or like you said like this is all make-believe situation because mm -hmm. we are not sitting at the yeah. border areas like we are not we are in houston so we don't know what exactly is going on i think generally there is an, an increase of people coming in but the thing is is they weren't allowed to come in under the um, migrant protection protocol okay. which is another thing the trump administration made up um, where they, people had to wait in Mexico for their immigration yes, court hearing, yes. right? I think that was announced at the end of 2018. I remember yes, that because yes. it was a big it, year of family yeah, separation that yeah. year. And and so a lot of people weren't allowed to come in for about a year or two based off that. And then COVID and Title 42. So really a lot of people might have tried, were you know, sent back, expelled, and now are, are, tr are trying again. A, a combination of those things or different issues that are happening around the world. I mean, you know, hurricanes or mudslides yeah. or civil strife, you know, then there's mm -hmm. like a need. Um, and, you know, we have been providing temporary protected status. Mm -hmm. We have been providing even parole okay. uh, for, so for certain countries. And that's a way to allow people to have a status, have work authorization and try not to, uh, for the parole, for example, for try not to come in, um, you know, at the border without documentation without the documentation yeah. okay so there is another question like they uh, advocates they have been criticizing for measures for blocking the uh, asylum seekers like yeah. the asylum access so that was also closed during the uh, the pandemic time well i mean if you couldn't come in then you couldn't even apply for asylum and and you mm -hmm. know yeah. so like during the yeah. migrant protection protocol which is what we call exactly. remain in mexico you know the advocates would call that mm -hmm. like they were having to apply outside yeah, um, like in and Mexico. They, or and they barely or had Venice. representation. Oh. The approval yeah. rates were like, I don't know, it was like 1% or something ridiculous for oh, asylum yeah. in court. Wow. Then you have the Title 42 and people are being expelled. They can't even come in to apply because asylum is inside the country. Refugee is like you're waiting outside, you're in yeah. line for a long time, refugee camp, yeah. that type of thing, and then you're eventually placed here. Yeah. So if you can't even get in, you can't even apply. Um, and so now we're seeing people who without, you know, Title 42, 
2 is going to be going away soon, but there's going to be other restrictions. And I think that's what the, the administration is concerned about, is that if Title 42 is not there, yeah. and we don't have migrant protection protocol, like what is so they, there is going to be an a sort of an influx they're, they're going to see uh, probably some more numbers but the, yeah. that's why they're trying to figure out well if you know so you're going to have a lot of people there's going to be demand then you and you you have time to plan then you you try to find a solution for that and so i think their their thought is that they're going to make it a little bit harder for asylum or or make it a little bit more yeah. difficult in some respects let me let me just take a very quick break. We are we're going to be right back over here with Ruby Powers with us. She's going to tell us what exactly is happening at the border cities because she has got clients who are talking to her, so she exactly know. Stay tuned. During the Move Up sales event at Big Star Cadillac, upgrade your luxury for just $1 down. Move up to the new 2023 XT4 Luxury Collection, $379 a month for 39 months lease, which is $1 down. Or purchase and enjoy $1,000 bonus cash. Let Big Star's Cadillac to your door bring you a concierge test drive. Golf Freeway, just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop at Big Star. Shop Big Star Cadillac. There is a road laid out for me. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need not see. What do you think? I know this road mm. is there for me. If I'm really free, take me down to the river and Hey! If you love me enough to tolerate my perfect little pets and all their glorious dander, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back. You're watching Truth Be Told with me, Sophia Jamal. Thank you again, Ruby, for being here and answering some of the questions. Of so now the point comes in like the other day, uh, last week, I would say, uh, Eric Adams, the governor of New York, he said like, because the migrants have been bust from Texas and Florida, so they're mm. having a crisis over there. Mm. So, so this, I know, because United States has always stood for human rights, you know, uh, this is the soul of the country. So we always stand by that. I know from state from our very own state of Texas, people have been bust. But do you think it is that big number that there should be a hu uh, human crisis or rehabilitating them in New York? Well, I think what what's going on is there could be just like m larger numbers than they anticipated. I mean, just imagine we we all like when we had Katrina or you know yeah. Ike or something yeah. like that yeah. um, or Harvey, right? Um, you know, we it there's a lot of need and we do we can't absorb a lot of it because of the nonprofits and the community and things yeah. like that. But if it's not expected or you know it's just a little bit over the top yeah. in terms of yeah. numbers, it, it's a shock to the system. And so that's probably what they're experiencing. And the thing is, is like in parts of the country, mm -hmm. some of the asylum law is more favorable than than others. So even if I, people I don't, don't like to yeah. say that in our very own state, this has been happening, but yeah. it has been happening. This is the, probably mm -hmm. the topic has been politicized a lot. Yeah. So so but it's not like it's going to create. Uh, I think they would like. Uh, 
I know there was a bunch of them. They were mm. transferred to other uh, states, mm. uh, the democratic states. But then it's not going to cause some kind of housing crisis over there or something like that. No, I mean, I, there's, there's a big movement anyway with our own yeah. Americans. During the pandemic, a lot of people relocated. We saw it in Austin. Uh, yeah, we <laughs> saw it in Texas. Lots yeah. of people came to Texas. Yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, in, in reality, it should, be, it should be good for the you know, economy. A lot of them will eventually be able to apply for work authorization we have a labor shortage but the point over here is like also like states they can only sustain this much number of people you well, know because I mean, it is a strain on our system right i mean if you think about it like we have another model like the refugee resettlement mm -hmm. you yes. know countries yes. say cities say i can take this many people that's yeah. what i can yeah. my city can absorb with our yeah. resources i mean i get that so if it's too much of a shock you know and they don't have they're not we're anticipating but you know it people can you know the free movement of people they can move their hearings they can move their address with their government and their check-ins you know with order supervision so they don't have to you know stay in uh, wherever they you know are sort of land but the other thing is some locations are more favorable than others they provide more resources like you know word on the street gets passed and they're like oh if you go to this you know state oh. they will let you get a driver's license if you don't have work authorization you know and like in texas we can't do that um and and so sometimes there's a lot more city benefits or county benefits and so you know that that also affects where people decide to go but then the taxpayers argument is always like okay we are paying taxes and, mm -hmm. and we are paying taxes for people who doesn't have documentation or we cross the border because let's face it united states is a country of laws mm -hmm. you know so there are laws for everything i'm, I'm a lawyer yes, yes. yes exactly <laughs> so i mean yeah. it is it is a debate which could go on probably mm -hmm. for the longest time, but I don't see any solution coming up because... Well, I mean, just a counter argument. If yeah. once they get work authorization, they're paying taxes as well. They're yeah. paying into the system. A lot of immigrants who don't have status whatsoever have been paying into Social Security and to the system as well. And I mean, we do have a labor shortage around the country. So mm -hmm. this is definitely, you know, well received. A lot of the jobs that these new immigrants are, are doing or could do mm -hmm. are not being done by Americans. And so, you know, that's that also affects the, the quality of life and the economy in, in the cities which they live. So, I mean, you could see it different ways. Another point, like yeah. you said, like we can look at it different ways. So it has been highlighted, oh, there are cartels and the cartel mm -hmm. members coming yeah. from the Republican government. This is always the argument in the conservative states. Oh, the cartel members are coming. Mm -hmm. What would you what would you comment on? That? Well, um, I mean, I'm not really concerned about the cartel coming inside the United States. I think what they're benefiting from is the you know the the migration of people getting to the United States. Unfortunately, because it is so difficult when the stakes are so high, when people are getting um, sent back, expelled, you know, detained, you know, or put in migrant protection, yeah. you know, so then then the, the the cost of trying to get to the United States uh, gets greater, and mm -hmm. unfortunately you know the, the cartels and smuggling rings they are making a lot of money off of this but my my argument is like they're always there well it's sort of like the argument about legalized marijuana yeah. so if it's legal yes. and you can tax and you, you can put safeguards around it and you have to have a card and whatever prescription whatever like it's regulated but yeah. if it's not and it's illegal then you know then it's wild wild west and so like if people could come to the u.s a little bit easier or there was less restrictions then there there probably would be a less less of a business for the cartels and smuggling rings mm -hmm. i mean i'm just we're just throwing you know the double side to every everything but i mean that's basically what's really um there's a there's a lot of things going on in the world and uh, people are fleeing and we have asylum law for a reason yeah. you know if you have past persecution and or fear future persecution on account of one of five protected mm -hmm. grounds and you you know you apply timely and you didn't have anywhere else to go then you should be approved mm -hmm. uh, it's just we're making it seems like we're making it really hard for people to have to prove that and we're maybe probably it's just uh, it's not that uh, that kind that level of an issue i know it is a big issue but mm -hmm. it's just we are making it we are politicizing it in such a way like we're making it such a big deal out of it yeah it is a big deal i'm not denying it right. like it is not a big deal obviously it's on a taxpayer it is a strain mm -hmm. i understand it's a strain on the system on the cities mm -hmm. but then what about human rights what about humanity what about uh, how how can we not take 
people's side who just cannot even provide for themselves in back home or whatever their countries are they're coming from so that is as a uh, as an immigrant myself i think i always will have a soft corner for the migrants who who because they're basically fleeing because right. they they do not have those kind of means back home so they probably cannot do it but they're just they just got And I mean it. as as Americans we take for granted a lo- the rule yes. of law. Yes. Um, we think you know if somebody does something wrong that they should, you know, yeah. be, be yeah. penalized for that. But in some many countries there is no rule of law. You 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 know there's corruption no, and No, it's and, scary and, yeah. to raise your children to 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 lose your family members and and there's so much violence and now uh, this week we saw Sudan what's going on in Sudan mm-hmm. suddenly and and it's just terrible and and yeah. there are things happening in the world and we have to stand by people. And yes, it is a tough call, I guess. This is an ongoing uh, debate. I mean, one thing I'd like to say is that I, I never really looked at immigration as a political issue um, okay. until the last, you know, few the, the political last years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, I look at more of like the movement of people for opportunity, for human rights, for economy, for better lives. And I mean, we have provisions. That's why I'm an immigration attorney. You know, I have, have to figure all the policies and laws and changes and everything. But you know that we have to navigate. But but reality, um, you know, it's we are a country of of, of immigrants, and yeah. Um, yeah. and we, we we are greater because of that. Thank you so much, Ruby, for giving me time. <laughs> this this was beautiful. The last line was beautiful because it's more of a movement for the people. Thank you. Mexican government began ramping up their detention in 2019 under pressure from former President Donald Trump. The Biden administration has continued that push as the U.S. made a record 2.2 million apprehensions at the U.S.-Mexico border last year only, including growing numbers from countries to which the U.S. struggles to deport people, such as Venezuela and Cuba. Now, the anticipated end of the Title 42 is sparking further concerns from migrant advocates who say they have already seen Mexico strive to keep back migrants, which can lead to ad hoc, inconsistent practices that can fuel further humanitarian crisis or human rights violations. How we can find solution and make this world a better place for everyone to be part of it. This is an ongoing issue that requires healthy debates and advocacy. Thank you for watching my show, Truth Be Told, with me, Sophia Jamal from NTV America. And for any kind of feedback, you can email me at sophia at ntvamerica.com.